Okay. So we'll like talk about a, that. Lots to talk about. Like a that. normal uterus weighs 50 grams. My weighed 1,050 grams. Wow. Okay. It was two and a half pounds. It That's was like wild. I was 16 weeks pregnant. I know. Wow. Oh my God. Okay. okay. Yeah. That's interesting. We All need right. to yeah. dive into that one. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> so let's start this. So we'll. Guess what, guys? We're not doctors. No, we are not. If you're going to be making any major medical decisions, please consult your doctor. Yes, and that includes diets, exercise, medications, and surgery. We love you guys. And we want you to be in our OSLP family forever. So be careful and consult Consult your your doctors. doctors. We love ProCare. You guys know this. And guess what? They have a brand new product out, and it tastes like an orange Tic Tac. That's right, I have got it in my hot little hands right now. It's their easy to swallow tablet in Citrus Grove. And both of us have fully switched over to it. We had to because it's easy to swallow, doesn't stick, and it has 45 milligrams of iron. And we both need that. Yes, we do. So go to ProCareNow.com to take care of all your bariatric body needs. So use code OSLP at checkout. Are you located in the Florida area? Well, we have the perfect office for you. Dr. Fridley and his wife, Macy, have created the perfect, welcoming, and safe place for your bariatric journey. That's right. So click on the link below to start your weight loss journey now. And don't forget to tell them that the OSLP's girls sent you. Welcome back, OSLP's Welcome back, OSLP family. Welcome, welcome. You are listening to our Sleep Life podcast, and this is Kelly. This is Mel. What? You like right when I said my line, you're like, bam, right there. That just means I'm on. I know. Wild. You weirdo. Normally you take a second. Nope. Not nope. Today. Not today. Not today, Satan. All right. So we <laughs> haven't said that in a long no, time. No, you haven't. Uh, so we want to touch on the fact that we do have a website. Yes, we do. It is our sleeve life podcast.com. And you want to sign up for the newsletter that it will be the first thing that pops up on the website. Yes. There are several reasons why you want to sign up for that newsletter, because one of them is you get notified when everything happens first. Yeah. Cause you're going to get two a week and it's going to be about the pot, what's mm-hmm. going on in the podcast. Mm-hmm. And then it's going to be about us. Yes. So that's going to be Behind a lot of fun. Scenes. And you get a free ebook. Yes. Um, which is really great because there's a lot of information in there. There is a lot of information. Mm-hmm. So those are two things. And then on, while you're on the website, there is our weekly bariatric pillar tracker. Yes. And you, when you purchase that, it's a digital download. So you can print it. You can use it on your phone, tablet, whatever. Um, and then you can also uh, track where you're at with protein, water, what your mood is, all of those things, especially vitamins. Oh, yeah. Because that's a good track or a good oh, yeah. thing to track. Because we tracked it and we realized we weren't doing it really well mm-hmm. like a year ago or so. Yeah. And so this is kind of why we wanted to do it for you guys is like it's a full year tracker. Mm-hmm. So that way you guys can actually like see what you're doing, how well you're doing, where do you need some help. Mm-hmm. And there's journal prompts in the newsletter mm-hmm. that you can use on the pillar tracker. Yes, because you have really a journal cool. page after each week. Yes, you do. So uh, we usually pick uh, two topics from the newest episode yeah. and you get to sit there and journal about it. It asks you really good questions and you can kind of I, I always like them. So yeah, I love it. I use them. We, so we love journaling. Yeah, yeah, we do love journaling. So the next thing that you are going to do on the website is go up to the top right hand corner. Mm-hmm. It is going to say become a patron. Click that because you would then get lots of perks. Well, not only do you get the pillar tracker half off, if you, you choose yeah. the $10 tier or higher, yep. you also get a monthly Zoom meeting with us, which mm-hmm. is actually happening with our patrons tonight. Yes. So we're very excited about that. Very stoked. Um, You even get to know like, 
when things are going to be released early. So like our pre-sales for tour tickets, Mm -hmm. pre-sales to the JBY. They also get discounts to going to these things. And they get a uh, brunch that is just for them after JBY. Mm -hmm. Um, So that's really cool. And that is free of charge. We uh, like to just give it back and let everybody know that we appreciate all the support. Mm -hmm. Um, and then what's the last thing they need to do, Mel? YouTube. YouTube, her it's favorite a free thing. Way. That's why I like it. I love free things. So <laughs> yes, we all it's do. Already on your phone. Yep. So literally click the YouTube button, type in our Silly Life podcast, hit that little bell and subscribe. And then every single Tuesday, mm-hmm. you get a video of us. And sometimes when we have a desk, a, a desk, a desk, I have desk. Um, I have desk. Like I have lamp. Oh my God. I love lamp. I love lamp. This is a problem this morning. <laughs> okay, you, you know just what? go to sleep over there. I know. I had chickens <laughs> running around in my backyard this morning. I got a broken coop. It was, it's been hectic. But we do have a guest with us. That's what I was trying to say. And she's been patiently waiting as we go through all the things. Yes, and we're so excited to have her on because we actually interviewed her at the bariatric retreat. We did. And wanted to hear more about her because mm-hmm. her story is interesting. So... Uh, We want to welcome you on, Emily. Thanks so much for being on the show. You're welcome. Nice to be here with you guys today. Yes. This time's not in person. No, not in person, but we get to hear- Not in person, no. Yeah, but it was only 15 minutes last time, so this time- We get to hear more. We hear a lot, lot. And if you guys ever come to ProCare again, you could come to my house for dinner, because I'm literally like 20 minutes from all their stuff. Ooh, Ooh. well, people are listening- Tour is coming, and one of the stops might be St. Louis. You never it know. It might be. It might be oh. St. Louis. So keep – go sign up for the newsletter so you know. Yeah. Like, that's the whole point. Okay. So, Emily, where did your story begin? Where did you first have an issue with your weight, and where did that all begin your journey? Um, I would say that food has been prevalent in my life. It's something that's always been of comfort for me. Mm-hmm. Um, I lost my mother to cancer when I was 10 years old. And so um, I think that I always was a bigger girl. Um, I definitely developed younger. I was probably five foot six in the sixth grade. Oh, yeah. So kind of wow. tall, kind of bigger, always kind of plus ish size, like always the junior plus size. Okay. Um, I think that I've always been like, you know, a little bit plus size. Mm, same. I would say that um, didn't really start. And my parents were very good at providing healthy foods and things like that in our home. Um, and so I would say it became a coping mechanism, like Mm -hmm. in my car, I never realized how much I ate in my car until I had this surgery, like not necessarily binge eating, but just in general, like, Oh yeah. Drive through. Right. Mm -hmm. It's no longer part of my vocabulary. It doesn't even like really exist to me. And I did have to change my route my way home from work after Smart. surgery yeah. to a different exit just to not drive by those places, yeah. um, which is fine. But yeah. I would say always, always been a bigger girl. Um, I would say I was a size 16 by my freshman year in college. Okay. Um, and then I guess I was depressed or didn't transition in college very well. And so I gained 50 pounds my freshman year in college. Okay. Okay. Um, didn't really treat the depression. <laughs> None of us really do in the beginning. <laughs> redirected. No. We act like redirected it's into from a university to going to culinary school, polar Ooh, opposite. Fun. Um, and so food has always been a part of my life. I mean, that was my career for all of my twenties. Oh, wow. Okay. And so um I kind of stayed a little bit more in shape being in the kitchen on my feet, you know, 80 mm-hmm. hours a week. Um and then the real big gain happened when I started in healthcare and I went from being standing all day long to being at more of a desk job. Okay. Although I do lead by walking around. I lead by walking around much better than I did before, but it was a constant like 10 pounds a year, honestly, um, wow. from like 2009 on. Wow. And then um, I got married in 2018. I worked with a trainer and I lost like 50 some pounds of working with the trainer and just kind of working on my diet. And then um, the pandemic happened. Yep. Yep. And I work in senior living. And so I never left my desk. Mm. And I realized now, like, we would provide snacks for the residents. And I would have two packages of cheese crackers in the morning and then have breakfast. Like, I ate my feelings and I didn't move because I was protecting the front door of people Mm. coming in and, you know, 
potentially bringing COVID into our building. Mm -hmm. And so um, that significant increase happened. So my highest weight was 383. Oh, wow. Okay. So how long ago did you have surgery? I had my surgery in November of 2021. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So you're a couple years out. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a couple years out. How did that Uh, transition, like being a lover of food and being in the food industry to now having surgery and not eating in the same way? Cause it, I mean, it, it has to change, right? Yeah. 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 (laughs) It was difficult. Right. But I also realized just because I can't eat a lot of food doesn't mean it has to be shitty food. Yes. Mm-hmm. Thank you for so, saying that. Yes. Yep. <laughs> yep. So like when I got into soft food or like even the pureed food, I still made like, and my staff was like, are you really eating pureed chili right now? I'm like, yeah, it's high protein. Uh, it's delicious. Yeah. I'm sorry that it looks <laughs> like. I mean, it looks like baby food, but it's fine. It yeah. still works. I mean, and it... you're in the baby. F- I call it baby food stage. Well, yeah, I mean, that's really what are. it is. Yeah. It yeah. was so gross looking, <laughs> but I made, you know, I mean, like I had these like, and four ounce containers were my friend, right? Yeah, I yeah. had everything in these little four ounce containers. It was all pureed. Like I did an enchilada something like, and so like first time I got on like solids or soft foods, it was like, I'm going to make the best smoked salmon scrambled eggs in a two ounce container I can make, oh, <laughs> you it's know, like it's going to be delicious. Yeah. So it it went from something I fed to my emotions to something that I truly enjoy now. Okay. And I, I'll be honest, like it got to the point where with my mobility that when I was meal prepping, even though I was trying to meal prep on Sundays, mm-hmm. I was rolling around in an office chair, mm-hmm. right? Oh. I wasn't standing. Okay. Um, I, I think the switch flipped for me when I saw my chiropractor and I'd been seeing her for like 12 years. She's wonderful. She does massage, stem. She does the uh, adjustment, all this. And, and it's it's a pretty reasonable price. She doesn't take insurance. Just a great gal. I've known mm. her for a long time. Love it. And she said to me, I can continue to adjust you every single week or you can make a decision to do something about your weight. Oh, okay. She was honest with you. Wow. You're no, yeah, but she's now, I mean, and she's, yeah, she'd never been that way with me, but I wasn't insulted at mm-hmm. all it was like okay well i guess if i don't want to wake up with hip pain every single night and i don't want to have my ears constantly ring because my blood pressure is elevated oh no wow then maybe <laughs> and maybe my moods would be in much better place if i weren't in pain all the time oh right 100%. so yeah. yeah so i never realized how bad i felt until i felt better you all might be asking yourselves, why do these girls love just meat so much? Well, we're going to tell you. Yeah, because so much freaking flavor, guys. Yes. Like, oh, my God. Insane. And I love to cook. And this has cut down my cooking time like in half. Literally the meat part, two to three minutes. Who doesn't want that what? for cooking? And I love, love, love the fact as a single person, I can cook one pack and eat that for the rest of the day of the rest of the week. Yeah. The rest of the week, people. And I love that it comes straight to your door. I don't have to go to the grocery store. I don't know about you, but I don't like going to the grocery store. No. So having this delivered is uh, ultimate. It is ultimate. And you just go to justmeats.co, pick out all your different flavors. Mm -hmm. You can really mix and match what you want and then use OSLP 25 for you to get $25 off your order. Go now. Are you feeling a little sluggish? Little lack of protein, little lack of caffeine. Well, we got the fix for that. That's right. Dive Bar Nutrition has the best protein bars. They have caffeine, protein, and they taste delicious. So head on over to divebarnutrition.com and use code OSLP at checkout. So, I think we can all agree to that yeah, one. Yeah. I we mean, didn't I, how I can bad it was. definitely say that when you're in pain, and that's like either chronic pain or um, just pain from being overweight. Mm-hmm. You don't realize how bad it is until you're on the other side. Like I remember yeah. going to the grocery store um, when I'd lost, I think it was like either 60 or 80 pounds. And I had, I think it was 60 and I had all these bags of potatoes around me. Oh, I remember that. Yeah. And I could barely pick up 40 pounds. It was 80. Yeah. It was 80 pounds because I could pick up four 40 pounds and there was four bags on the ground. Yep. And 
I just remember thinking, no wonder I was in pain. Yeah. Like I'm carrying around all this weight that I can't even pick up, but it was on my joints. It was on my legs. Everything was in pain and you don't realize it until you're out and you're like, oh, this is much easier to deal with not mm-hmm. being in pain 24 yeah. seven. Yeah. 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 So, and I, I realize now that I'm in my job, my building that I actually am the director of there's it's 72,000 square feet. Okay, so it's big. big. Yeah. yeah. So you walk around that thing four times and it's a mile nice. and you can easily do that. And so what I've had to, instead of emotionally coping with food at work, because seniors like sweets, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. There are always baked goods everywhere, everywhere. Okay. In the break room, one time over Christmas, because people are very thankful for the, the, the service that we provide. Mm-hmm. I counted 17 boxes of chocolates. Whoa. 17. Whoa. And so that's not a little, that's a lot. That's a lot. No, that's a lot, girl. Like it, it, lot. it's incessant. And so I've started like kind of training our families. Like we really need to think about maybe wellness. They love lip balm. Let's talk about some lotion. How about some oranges and some granola bars? And then we were like showered with that. And everybody's like, what happened? They're <laughs> <laughs> like, what the fuck? I want my sweet. What? What happened to the break room? I'm like, you guys need vitamin C. It's respiratory virus season. <laughs> Those emergency packets are really good for you. Uh, they, they are. are. Beauty. Like, <laughs> What's funny is when you were talking about like all the, the, the boxes of chocolates and baked goods and stuff, I just had like this, like, it's like a video game and you're trying to get away from them. Yes. And you're like, <sighs> boom, it's there. Boom, it's there. Seriously. All over the place. And I think a lot of people that work in an office office setting can feel you on during certain times. So, you know, Easter or Valentine's day or Christmas, people are just incessantly bringing Mm -hmm. like these sweet cookies, candy, candy canes. Like it's everywhere. It's everywhere. And I worked at progressive and it's, it is like cubicle. You have a desk Mm -hmm. and yes, we had standing desks, but here's the deal about office office is someone brings something on Monday. Yep. Someone brings something on Friday. Mm-hmm. And if there is a birthday in there, there's yep. cake. Yep. Um, if there is like a celebration anywhere, like, mm-hmm. hey, customer service week or it's like the secretary week. Yep. Like, oh, my God, it is filled like crazy. And that's actually was only a year and a half out. Mm. And I'm just like, I can smell it. And I'm like, mm, I don't want to go in there. Like, I hate it, it when so they bring hard. donuts. Yeah. I know. That's and I the love worst. Me some donuts. Yeah. And, and then you get that waft the, of like just sugary well, dough. And they know goodness. they knew my favorite donut, which is the chocolate sprinkle. Yeah. And so they were like, oh, Mel, we got you a donut because they didn't know I had surgery. Yeah. Like I kept it very low wraps. Only if you knew me, you knew. You knew. Yeah. So yeah. like I this was like a switch over job. So no one knew. And I'm just like, don't get me my favorite. Oh, no. I think oh, no. I love the fact <laughs> that you started a movement of like, let's bring in oranges. Let's bring yes. in lip balm. Do like, it. I wish that more offices because I've I've worked in my fair share of offices. Yeah. And right. it is stupid how much sugar is in that office. I think everybody would benefit from. Hey, it's it's secretary's week. Here's some really good lip balm, right? Some I like the lotion. Yeah, granola like, bars, I got all oranges. My, I got all my nurses massages instead of, you know, oh, because oh, yeah. But also I asked like for permission like do you are you kind of person that would want a massage or not? Mm. Like cuz I'll get you something else. But I mean, yeah, who the fuck are, doesn't want a massage? Some people don't like, some to, be people don't like to be touched. Yeah. You know, I think that's fucking weird. I know. It's I think not weird. it's it's weird that you only like your legs touch. I am one of the person that I'm like, the harder you massage nope. me, the better. And I want to be like pushed into the table. I want to be like liquid. Oh, my God. Liquid no, when I get you. done. I want to like so you want that just like, like metallic taste in your mouth. Like they really got in there and got into your muscles. Like, you know, I, really I don't. Like- think I've ever had a metallic oh, no? in my mouth. You haven't gone that far. Then. It's like a thing. It apparently, is. like if you're de- you go into a massage dehydrated and they and they massage you that like, I don't know, I've had a metallic taste in my mouth yep. afterwards because they're like looking all kinds of things. Huh. I've also seen someone like spit up blood because they went too far. But, uh-uh. Yeah. No, I, know. I mean, but you have to you have to also like give yourself some grace when it comes to sugar. And also my my coworkers know to call me out on it. Like there's this signature like 
senior staple that's like a strawberry pretzel salad, you know, with like the cool whip and the strawberries. Oh, yeah, I love that. Yeah. And I knew that there was some left over in the cooler. And I was like, I'm going to have this because yeah. I have room for this today. And as soon as I started to eat it, they're like, and they looked at each other and they're like, she's going to burp. It's going to happen. And like, they're going <laughs> to because if I have sugar and I eat it too fast, I immediately start burping. It's that's my reaction. That's so carbs hilarious. And, sugar. and they know They're like here it comes. Here it comes. We know it's coming. So you are very open with your coworkers. I had to be. Yeah. I mean, I work in healthcare. Um, I, I kind of have to. Um okay. they knew, I mean, they saw me slowly, not necessarily dying, but just in general. So I, I don't know where the, I guess I'd read something somewhere um, about the pandemic and you talk about post-traumatic stress mm -hmm. and I saw something about post-traumatic growth. Oh, I've and never so heard of that. I okay. thought, Tell yeah, that it's a thing. Like you make it get through this huge thing, which for me was running a senior living community that doubled in size mm -hmm. the day that the pandemic started and we kept it away for 300 days and no one died. Fuck yeah. Congratulations. So, <laughs> yeah. So for me to do that, I realized I'm capable of keeping all these people safe. I'm capable of taking care of myself. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. And you have and so to. Mm -hmm. We're empaths by nature as, as people, at least most people are. And mm -hmm. so you, you realize you're taking care of all these people, but you're not taking care of yourself. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. I was like, I think I can do this. Um, I think that I think the changing point for me was I went to Lane Bryant to get stuff for a uh, Fourth of July. We, my family has a Fourth of July party, and nothing in the store fit anymore. Ooh, that's a great NSV. No, she's saying that they don't fit. Anymore. Nothing fit. No, but be no, like before she's too big. Oh, before like, force. I'm sorry. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> that's not a congratulations I thing, though. <laughs> I mean, I guess it brought you to where you are now, but. <laughs> no. Oh no. That's a, that's a, I mean, I would, I still fit into their stuff, but it's just kind of big. But anyway, I, but yeah, I was like, oh my God, I can't even find a patriotic t-shirt. I see. That's mm -hmm. happened you know? to me before at Maurice's. And, mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Maurice's man, their two X and three X aren't, they're not legit. No, I mean, they're they not legit. No, they are not. No, mm -hmm. no thing. Cause that happened to me on New Year's Eve. Me and my ex-husband would always get like a new outfit like that week before so we can all like, you know, cheer. Well, yeah, you got to dress up for New Year's. Couldn't find shit. Yeah. And he like, mm -mm. he can see me just slowly breaking down. He's like, honey, it's okay. We'll find something. And I'm like, yeah, I don't want to shop and anymore. I, I'm angry. <laughs> and then I realized I sat on that deck and like baked in the sun because I knew that I wasn't physically able to jump in the lake and pull myself up off the, off the off the thingy, mm -hmm. like the the ladder. Yeah. 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 Like, I, I think the year before I like swam to the shore next door and like walked up because I knew I couldn't pull myself up. Mm. I and can... so, oh, sorry. Keep going. And this year it was a totally different thing. Yay. I had a patriotic outfit. I was ready to go. I was the auntie in the water watching all of the children. Yes. Like yeah, that. that's yes. great. Yeah. That's so amazing. I just flashed to when I went camping with my ex and his best friend and we went into like a little lake situation and Eric was so concerned that I wouldn't be able to get back at, like out of the water at Detroit. Yeah. But it was like off roading. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. OK. So it was like on the other side of Detroit and it was off roading and we were just in this little cove area. No one around. And literally, like, I felt like I could do it. You know, mentally, I was like, I could fucking do this. But then he was like, Mel, like, just be careful. Like, I don't know if I can pull you out. Like, if something happens to you, like, and I just realized, like, oh, there's a weight problem here. Cause like Eric is like, he's a buck 50, five, five. Mm -hmm. So he mm -hmm. knew his strength and what he can do in that water. But in my head, I didn't even mm -hmm. think about my weight. But that's actually like where it kind of started with the whole like being outdoorsy. And realizing, oh, I can't pull myself up. Mm -mm. Like, I can't do these long walks. That I, I Mentally, I think I can. Mm -hmm. But, like, to physically mm -hmm. do them, I could not do them. Well, what I'm, what I'm thinking of, of is, when you said that, is if there were something that happened, mm -hmm. so say you got, I don't know, bit by a fish. Right. And you couldn't, and you were in immediate danger. Yeah. And... 
somebody tried to help you and your weight kept you from being saved, yeah. like you could easily could die. die. Yeah. That's what he was yeah. concerned about. Cause he's like, cause I was like 300 pounds. So I mm-hmm. get it. Mm-hmm. I'm double his weight. Mm-hmm. And he has a real concern that I was just like, whatever, not a problem. But I didn't, you know, because I didn't want to face mm-hmm. that I am actually a big woman. Well, you why know? would you? I hid that from myself, mm-hmm. you know, 100%. And it was wild because I was like, oh, he is right. like when we like, you know, had drinks and we actually fished and I ate a fish for the first time, like from the lake. He literally like caught it, cleaned it and I ate it. And then he didn't take off the little. I call it the skeleton. I was like, you made me eat a skeleton. Oh, my God. Oh, the bones. He's like, it can get caught in your back of your throat. Why didn't you pull it out? I'm like, why would you give it to me like that? I don't understand. (laughs) When I get, when people give me No, man, you're going to get the the tweezers and get all the pin bones out. Yeah. 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 So, like, I was just, like, freaked out. But I realized, like, that later that night as we were drinking and talking, I was like, yeah, you're right. I don't know what I was thinking. Did you swallow the bones? Uh, no, he caught me before I did. That's oh. why he was like, Melanie, got it. You got to take it out. And I was like, what am I having to take out? I've never taken anything out of a fish before. Oh, my <laughs> so God. Why being outdoorsy can be slightly risky. At it time. is. <laughs> it is. And when oh you're totally God. in denial about yeah. what your weight is, what you're capable mm-hmm. of, you can really put yourself in some dangerous situations. Mm-hmm. And he was just so nervous that he, like, I was going to get hurt and then he can't get me out. Mm. And I'm like, yeah, we have Brad here, but I don't know if both of them can. Like, we have no idea. So, I mean, guys, be careful when you are overweight. Don't be in denial like Mel and act like you can be like a superwoman and do all the things because you actually could really hurt yourself mm-hmm. 100%. Yeah. And now I can't. Can. Yeah. Like, you know, yeah. 120 pounds down. And I'm like, I can do this. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You, you so, back no then, no. now. I have a question because yeah. I get in my head. Right. So I've been exercising a lot. And okay. like, do you ever go back to your old self physically? Like I was at my sister's. I was helping her move some stuff. Mm-hmm. I had a bunch of tubs and I'm walking down these stairs and I got the tub and I immediately went to turn to the side, grab yes. the handrail. Yep. And I'm like, but I'm physically capable mm-hmm. Of doing this, but in my head, I'm like, oh my God, I'm a fool. Yep. Yep. Well, and I, I think, do two steps down too. Yeah. If you yeah. if you think about it, when you spend however many years being plus size, it's it's automatically ingrained in you to do these small things. So step to the side when when you're going down an airplane like aisle. aisle yep. Or you can't like, cause that was something that I had to come to grips with is that I am stronger and I can, I'm more capable of doing things now. Yep. So I would all automatically say, oh, well, I can't, I can't do that. I can't lift that. That's too heavy for me. Instead of like, no, I am physically able. I can lift that. I can do these things instead of yeah. just like, because after so many years, so even, you know, you were how old when you got surgery? I was 27. 27. So 27 years, 28 years of you doing these things because of your weight. Right. Yeah. You know, like. Because I'll be 45 this year. Wow. There you go. See, mine was a shower. Did you ever have a shower situation? Like I used to turn because I didn't want the the, Mm -hmm. the thing to touch you. Oh. Fucking hated it. It Our bathrooms, bathroom stalls. Yeah. Oh, Those are a big one. Fucking bathroom stalls. You still immediately go to the handicap one because there's more room. Yep. Oh, well, I just do that well, because I like more room. We're weirdos. We're weird. <laughs> and, People yeah. watch us do this all the time, but we'll, me and her <laughs> go into the handicap stall together. They probably, That's okay. They probably think we're doing it or something, but we're just oh, like, yeah. no, we just pee together. It's so much easier. It is. Know. because, And I always get to pee first because Mel takes fucking forever to pee. I know. And Something's if happening. you talk to her, then it like she loses focus. <laughs> And so I always pee first and then I'm just like hanging out waiting for Mel to pee. Just don't eye lock. I can't pee if you eye lock. I don't eye lock (laughs) with you. She tries not to. I don't. It's when I talk. That's true. Because I'll be saying like, oh, so-and-so text us or whatever. And then she's like, I I know because now I'm thinking about the text and I can't pee. (laughs) This is a a new thing. It started a couple years ago. I don't know what's happening with my body. You're slowly becoming your mom. I know awful that's like my mom is (laughs) back to emily i'm sorry okay Okay. so can we (laughs) We digress so we so you had surgery which surgery did you have yeah i had the vsg surgery okay um 
I had it at Wash U with Dr. Egan. He's the head of surgery at Barnes West. Okay. Um, Washington University is a pretty big medical system. They yeah. do a lot of research. Um, That's great. I really had a good experience. Good. So did you find yeah. him just because like you work in kind of that area or how did that? Work? Yeah, I did a little research and there's okay. a couple other good ones in St. Louis as well. Okay. Um, but I just, um, knew that, that that's where I wanted to go okay. and I wanted to do it at bar and I wanted to do it at Barnes West because when my mom was sick, I spent a lot of time at the big barns. You guys have probably seen it. It's a giant barns. Mm -hmm. It's a giant, um, hospital. Even the smell of it still brings back a sensory memory. I've been in there before and I, so I can't, I said, I, I wanted to make sure I had it at Barnes West. Yeah. That okay. makes sense. That yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. yeah. So how has everything been, you know, after surgery? Like, how's the relationships going? Friends, families? You said that you're so, married. So, yeah, I am married. My husband, Tim, um, he did not have surgery, but he did lose a significant amount of weight as well, just because healthy habits. Yes. Right? Yep. Yes. Um, and so uh, my family was very supportive. My parents were super cute because I got my surgery was on November 19th, not no 19th, the 21st. I don't know, whichever. No, the 19th. Yeah. <laughs> My dad's birthday's on the 21st. And then <laughs> <laughs> November, and then it was Thanksgiving. Like, mm. you know, and I, Quickly they were too. so cute. They were like, we'll have our dinner and then you can come over and we research what we could give you. And so they made me like a carrot ginger soup with yogurt. Oh, that is very sweet. That yeah. Very like sweet. I could barely eat it, but it was an, you know, they were, they were very supportive. Um, oh, I love good. It. That's good. So uh, as far as friends go, um, had a pretty solid group of friends. Um, I didn't really lose any friends yeah. over this. Um, my bestie and I, I think it was a food was definitely what we did together. Mm -hmm. um, definitely like to share meals together. And um, we still, um, and I, I think we even like um, quarantine before there was quarantine. We like going to Walmart at like 530 in the morning. You know, okay, and okay. so that was like our thing on Saturday morning. And then we added the gym to that. Right. Okay, and go. then we go to okay. Walmart. OK, um, <laughs> then you go to also, Walmart. <laughs> but it was also the way to like socially distance, but yet see each other during mm. the pandemic was we yeah. would shop. OK, um, I mean, I like that. there's nothing wrong with shopping. Mm. No. And first thing you know, hit you hit the clearance aisle. And, oh, you yeah. Know, find all the treasures and things oh, yeah. like that. Yeah, you um, have to. We definitely. Um, have maybe scaled down some of the things that we do on holidays. I think that my family was definitely over the top mm. um, when it comes to those things. Actually, no, they're still very extra when it comes to holidays and meals and things okay. like that. It's so um, hard. I get it. It's so hard, but I think that they've respected those boundaries. They know that I, and I just have to really control it on my own. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, because it's not know. it's not their responsibility no. to make sure that you have food at dinner, like yeah. and or on a holiday. Like none no. of it is their responsibility. And so it falls on you to yeah. be prepared for what you're going into. Mm -hmm. And I think like I yeah. I think I always the, know there's gonna be shrimp cocktail. Yeah. Oh, I, yeah. I think a lot of people um <laughs> love shrimp. Because I know in the yeah. beginning when I was for like very newly post-op mm -hmm. and I would go to like a birthday or something, I'd get so irritated because they're like, they have pizza or, you know, then they have like the birthday cupcakes or the cake or whatever. And I would get so irritated because it's like, don't they know that I had surgery? But then as I, for, I got further out, I was like, oh no, this is my responsibility. If I need to eat something specific, I need to be able to bring it. And or like adjust how I do things. So yeah. like with pizza, I would just tear all the toppings off. There you go. And yeah. throw the crust in, which the crust is the best part. I'm just saying. So it was very hard for me to throw that in the trash. But I would just eat the toppings. Most people have vegetables and like hummus yeah. and things like that out, which is great. Mm -hmm. um, I just learned yeah. how to make it different and make it work for me. But I think a big point of that was it's on my responsibility yeah because like last night so I do uh cookings with Shay on Tuesday yes and mm -hmm. we were ta actually talking about this which yeah. is kind of crazy we're talking about it again um because what I was telling people because they were talking about going to birthdays and what to do because we had some newly post-ops on mm -hmm. and I was like okay guys you're gonna have to just bring one item that mm -hmm. you love yeah 
just bring it. So that way, you know, you have one thing that you can eat. It doesn't yeah. matter what they put out mm -hmm. as long as you bring the one thing. And hopefully there's other things you can eat, mm -hmm. which would be great. But if there's not, you at least have something and you have mm -hmm. protein forward on it. And if mm -hmm. you do that, then you're going to be totally more successful. And yeah, you have to own your own journey. Like they're mm -hmm. not in your journey. Yeah, you're mm -hmm. in your journey. So you got to own that shit. And then you got to bring your protein shakes. You got to bring that hummus. You got to bring those veggies, like mm -hmm. do the things for yourself, because that's actually what self-care is, like is literally taking care of yourself. And mm -hmm. that does mean exercise, water, protein. Like you got to get these in. Mm -hmm. It's just really important to have a successful journey because this is not a year long journey, guys. No, this is forever. This is no, you know, long. it's not. And this part right here, this part right here is the hardest part I yeah. think, mm -hmm. of it all is. the things. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. I do remember the first time my husband and I went out to eat uh, post surgery mm -hmm. and we waited a really long time. And it was a seafood restaurant. Mm -hmm. um, shout out to 1818 Offshore in Edwardsville, Illinois. Oh, um, but Check they, um, I looked at it and I was like, okay, it's opening night. I've opened a restaurant before. This could, could be really bad or really good, but it'll be entertaining for me. Right? <laughs> yeah. First of all, I'm chef. not even going to have to be focusing on the food, but I noticed on their menu that they had, you could order colossal shrimp by the piece. What? And I'm like, yes. That's so cool. Or yeah, so I'm like protein forward, first mm -hmm. of all. And when I went with my girlfriends and I was like, this venue is so protein protein forward, they just started laughing at me like, <laughs> They're like what's that? What? <laughs> what do you mean? I'm like, well, you can. <laughs> I was like, you know, I can get a salad with it anyway. So <laughs> they just they were like, whatever. You're pretty funny that you said that. But I know, you know, it's about planning. Like you can enjoy mm -hmm. a night out. You really mm -hmm. can. You can. can you really drink and eat at the same time. Not really. You can have a half a glass of wine before you have your shrimp. Fine. Mm -hmm. And, the, mm -hmm. you know, but it's. Yeah. So that was that was definitely special to. to, to but you have to know your your what you're going into. Yeah. Yes. Can you tell For us sure. more about because we had touched on it at retreat about after having surgery, your period. And okay. yeah, because I want to yeah. hear more about this. Yes. So I've always had heavy periods. I always blamed it on being overweight, um, just in general. Um, my periods were always pretty regular. Mm -hmm. um, I always saw my gynecologist because my mother did die of cervical cancer. Mm -hmm. So um, I, well, that was her initial diagnosis turned into, you know, more cancer and things mm -hmm. like that. But um, so I had a really good relationship with my gynecologist and she had always been very, not judgy okay. about my weight, mm -hmm. more like come see me at when you're ready to quit smoking. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Oh, shout out to 900 days, cigarette free. Wow. Yay! Congratulations. Oh That's over that was years. last week. It came up on my phone. I didn't even think about it. That's so, so exciting. Congrats. Um, I, you know, told her I'd quit smoking. I'd had the surgery, things like that. And I'd been seeing her since like, oh, 2008. I think when oh, I moved I back to the St. Louis area. So a long time. Yeah. And so we said, okay, well, let's talk about, you know, IUD or something to help with these heavy periods. Um, and so we did that. And then um, I uh, got COVID and I hadn't had COVID. So it's like, I guess was September, 2022. Yeah. September, 2022. And so I made it that far without having it. it wow. Crazy. That is crazy. That especially being in a and, medical. Facility. Yeah. And yeah. my, and my husband had baseball playoffs. And so like we separated ourselves, you know, because he couldn't miss his baseball playoffs. And of course and not. He made the, they made the playoffs. I mean, so, you know, um, and so I had separated myself. We even actually went to the holiday and down the street. <laughs> <laughs> like, I just, and it was actually really nice, like three days of full on self care. Like I couldn't be around anyone. I brought mm. healthy food from home. It was just down the street. Nice. And so <laughs> I didn't even, you know, indulge on the Cracker Barrel that was right there. But so uh, then it was like Monday, I was getting ready to go back to work and uh, I just started passing like giant blood clots. And like mm. my periods were always like day one, day two were terrible. Bring an extra pair of pants like wow. that. Fast. Okay. And, um, or having to go home and, and deal with that. Right. Yep. And so my iron had always been low. Um, I'd always felt a little weak. Mm. Um, and so just started passing these giant blood clots. And I was like, okay, well, I'm just going to go to Barnes West where my surgeon is in case, 
any of this happen, and I know that that ER is small, mm -hmm. I can get in and out. Mm -hmm. It's early in the morning. And yeah. my, I called my director of HR operations and said, Hey, I'm, oh, she goes, you're driving yourself to the hospital and you're passing blood clots. I said, yeah, sure, I sure am. <laughs> they're probably like girlfriend. Like, did you at least uh, just text me when you get there? Yeah. You know? Safety first. Yeah. Yeah. So they didn't. Um, and I told them that I'd recently had COVID and all the medicines that I was on. And I know that I've heard things about blood clots and COVID. And so mm -hmm. I was like, okay, maybe this is a reaction from, I don't even know, but, okay. or it's a terrible period. Then they send me my gynecologist, um, immediately after the ER, cause there was nothing wrong with me medically. All my blood work was fine. Iron was low always. Yeah. Okay. And <laughs> like, Oh, it's low. Okay. Like, um, and so then, uh, they did like a scan, uh, whatever a uh, sonogram or whatever what do you want to call it? i don't MRI? know MRI yeah not an MRI but they did a oh the ultrasound thing. ultrasound thank you i couldn't think of that word yesterday either <laughs> um and so, <laughs> we got you girl <laughs> i'm like what is the name of anyway so i had that done it was like a murder scene in that room like it was just it never stopped oh. and so they said we'll prescribe you a birth control mm -hmm. i said okay those hormones make me crazy it, it messes with my anxiety, but sure, I'll go ahead and take those. Mm. Yay. Was that the pill? What were you taking? It was like a, proge a progesterone or something. I don't know. It was like okay. a five milligram pill. Okay. And they said, this will help. I said, okay. And so fast forward to the file and like, I have nurses all around me. They're like, you look terrible. Yeah. You look terrible. You need to go home and nap. Are you sure you, d you, you know? And so I was at work. I drive. Went to work the whole week. They sent me home to nap one day. Um, I was doing my normal Saturday shopping with my bestie at the Walmart. And I bent over to pick something up and I saw stars. Okay. And I was like, oh, this isn't good. Yeah. yeah. And then we went to Sam's and I <laughs> kept going, went to Sam's. And then I, and I just started passing more giant clots again. Mm. And it was like everywhere. And I got home and I took a shower. And I said to my husband, I said, I'm really, I said, honey, I, I'm really scared. Like, yeah. I think there's something seriously wrong with me. And mm -hmm. so I, I messaged my um, uh, gynecologist. Oh, by the way, I forgot to tell you that, that lady that I'd been seeing since 2008, she was on, out on medical leave. Mm -hmm. So I had to meet a brand new provider that was oh, her first day back from maternity. Leave. Oh, that's scary. It's like, I don't want a uh -huh. new person. No. Like, I don't want a new person. No. But shout out to Dr. Crear because she's awesome. Okay. Right. Good. So. You ended up liking her. Um, I like it. I ended up liking her because my other doctor ended up, I don't know what happened to her, but she didn't ever coming, ever end up coming back. Oh. And like all my girlfriends who don't have kids because she does, they didn't do OB. They just did gynecology. All my girlfriends went to her. Oh. I'm like, what happened? Where'd yeah. she go? I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> so anyway, I ended up going to the ER again, knowing that my gynecologist had, had practices or whatever privileges there. Mm. And, um, my hemoglobin was uh, a 7.2. What, what is it should be at? So a hemoglobin is your, like your blood count. Mm -hmm. A normal range is 13. Oh, oh. okay. So you're low. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. And and I kind of know this from working with seniors, like if, if their hemoglobin's low, we send them to the ER, they get mm -hmm. it. So I ended up getting blood. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then they ended up giving me um, a medication. I can't remember the name of it, but it was to keep my blood from clotting. Okay. Okay. Almost like a blood thinner. Or keep it tight. Not a blood thinner, sorry. It was it was to keep me from bleeding so much. Okay. So it kind of clotted your blood, I guess. Yeah. yeah. So um, the the birth control and the medication that they gave me, side effects are blood clots. Oh, interesting. Uh -huh. Side effects are blood, blood clots. You're and like, with my history my of smoking. is blood clots. Yes. So, I'm with yeah, you. so you're bleeding. So anyway, I'm um, highly I left confused. there. I'm highly yeah. confused on why, why <laughs> doctors are so fucking stupid. <laughs> no, but it's, it's a, it's a normal, it's a normal thing that they give you to help with the bleeding. Okay. okay? But, and I looked it up. It's like TPX or something. They gave it to me via IV and then they gave me a medicine. And so I just continue like Emily always does and just keep <laughs> moving. So I'm like, okay, I'm just going to go ahead and go to this conference in Chicago, but I'm going to make sure because I am a good patient and I'm going to wear pressure stockings and I'm going to get out of the car and walk around and stop and take a walk. Like, cause it's a four and a half hour drive. Right. Yeah. I go there and back in one day. And like the next weekend, I guess so this 
first incident was like September 24th. It's now like October 8th. I'm still bleeding, like still bleeding all the time. Whoa. Like wearing the, like, I don't know. I mean, if you, if you're a heavy bleeder, those little, those big purple pads from Aldi's, yeah. those are the best. Those are the best ones. Either that okay. or like, you know, the granny poise pads. So okay. <laughs> I'm wearing these. I'm still bleeding. It's disgusting. And then I'm like, man, it feels like, like I pulled a muscle in my leg. Well, that's not good. So I go back to the ER. I'm still bleeding. I still feel like crap. My hemoglobin's low again. And I'm like, hey, just for shits and giggles, can you scan my leg? Because it feels like I pulled a muscle or something and it looks slightly bigger than the other one. And the lady's like, are you sure? And I'm like, yeah, I'd also like a pelvic exam because I want you, you know, she's like, are you sure? I'm like, well, when I leave here and I am continuing to bleed profusely yeah. and there's nothing being done about it, I'd like for you, you know, to see that anyway. Well, no, it's like, I'm so, fucking sure. Like yeah. I've been bleeding for two weeks yeah. and I feel like shit. My hemoglobin is low. Yeah. Cause yeah, I started bleeding. Be... I remember it was my, my assistant's wedding, September 17th. I started. So that was the journey. So um, from September... September... Oh, wait a minute. Oh, wait a minute. September, September 17th. So September 24th, I'm still bleeding. Yeah. Okay. All right. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so now it's October 8th and, um, turns out I had a blood clot in my leg from the medicine that they gave me. Oh my God. And... Oh so my God. I'm admitted to the hospital yeah. and I'm on blood thinners while bleeding. So you're losing blood quickly at the same time. Wait a minute. Okay. Because they have so, to give you the blood they have for the to... clot. Yeah. Yeah. They have to. Oh my God. If they're not able to pull the clot out, yeah. then they have to do that. That's what Erica. Had. And so I was trying to advocate <laughs> for myself. So now I've got a hematologist on board. I've also okay. got a specialty, a, a gynecological surgeon. Because they know my uterus is so large that they're going to have to have a specialty guy. She's like, this is the guy who went to medical school with Dr. De your doctor who is no longer practicing medicine. They went to school together. They're friends. <laughs> like, because oh. she felt so bad for me. Like, she even showed up at the hospital. And I know that they don't have an office there. Oh, Dr. Wow. Crear. Like, to wow. check on me every day. Wow. Yeah. That's pretty cool. And yeah. It was pretty cool, actually. And so, well, she was probably there delivering babies. But either way, I'm, I was really happy to see her. Yeah. And okay. so... They also put me on the neurological floor because COVID, mm. they didn't have any other place to put me. Okay. And um, so it was like spending the night in um, our memory care unit, meaning like all of the behaviors and things like that. Like mm -hmm. I turned on my executive director hat and was toddling out my little robe and was like, hey, if you want to get this guy to stop trying to get out of bed, I suggest that you do this. Emily's just schooling them. Oh, don't, the don't mind me. I'm just going to be helping you. And then there was at a point where my roommate fell and I knew her kids were coming to visit. And I'm standing out in the hallway like, don't like waiting for their kids to come visit. Like, I'm going to I'm going to block the kids from seeing mom on the floor. Like, oh I still God. was. Yeah. So anyway, I couldn't get a hysterectomy, which is what I needed. True caregiver over there. Because what? I wasn't on because I was on blood thinners because you have to be on blood thinners for 90 days. Okay. So there's no such thing as an emergency hysterectomy, which I think should change, especially when people are bleeding like they're bleeding. Yeah, that's fucking stupid that they don't mm -hmm. have that as a thing. Well, but they didn't want to, I didn't want to install a mesh to catch the clot if they were to do the surgery, all the, because it's just all the things. Okay. Yep. And the guy refused to do it. He was like, I'm sorry, but this is what's going to happen. And so, of course, you know, I've already met my deductible. Yeah. At this point. Yeah. You're yeah, just keep you're going. Solid. Yep. Yeah. And like, um, so fast forward, it's now like Halloween and I'm still bleeding and I'm feeling like headed and I, and I really wanted to drive the res the residents in the bus for the Halloween parade, but I also didn't want to pass out behind the wheel. So Thank you for that. at this point, I know, <laughs> I know that I need to go to the hospital again. And at that point, that's when I started getting appointments for iron infusions. Okay. Yeah. So I had six iron infusions. Um, so that it was like every Monday for six weeks. So, um, anyway, I ended up having my hysterectomy on January 17th. So from September 17th wow. to January 17th, I bled. That's wild. So when and, you and, think about, and it was because of the blood thinners that you had to be on. No, for no, no, it was, it was from the uterine fibroids. No, I mean like why you had to wait to have surgery. Yeah. That, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All mm -hmm. right. 
So, uh, because like I couldn't get on the treadmill without like bleeding or peeing my pants or, you know, cause it's putting pressure on my bladder too. Yeah. So, so I didn't, and I didn't realize that that was anyway. So, and then I couldn't exercise. Right. Mm. So here I am, I've done all these, all the things right. And I'm kind of stuck. Yep. Mm-hmm. Right. And I can't, I mean, I can go on a walk. That's great. But like, to, you know, get those good workout vibes going. There's no way. That wasn't- it's like, impo- it's be impossible. Yeah. yeah. I have a question. Um, sure. During this whole thing, because your iron was low and all of that, were you mm-hmm. on a multivitamin with iron? Yes. Okay. So you were on this whole time. It was just mm-hmm. the bleeding yeah. And the hematologist, I met with her cause I still have to follow up with her. And I met with her six months post op of hysterectomy. Okay. Um, and my levels were all back to normal. She just wanted to make sure that it wasn't just something else. Cause you know, people who have bariatric surgery, their iron, their iron, their yeah. iron <laughs> tends to run low. Yeah. And I've heard of people having have infusion. So. Yeah. I had infusions and, yeah. last year. Yeah. Yeah, I had yeah. two of them because, yeah, like it does run low and I already had low iron. Mm-hmm. And the reason why I wanted to talk to you about this is because I had regular I have regular periods, but they're heavy. And then yeah. Kelly tells me I look like death because I become completely pale. My son yeah. does. Everybody does. And I just like I have to eat protein and she's so a much bear to deal with. Yeah, I don't. And you don't feel good, right? No, and I feel you don't like I realize Ill. how bad your cramps are until you don't have them anymore. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. I like the, 100% agree. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So get a scan and see what, if you got the fibroids. I mean, and I wouldn't get into, I didn't, I kept my ovaries to keep my hormones yeah. fine. I said, okay, if there's something wrong with my ovaries, take them. Mm-hmm. But if there aren't anything, if there isn't anything wrong with my ovaries, then, then go ahead and keep them. And so they kept them. So you got a scan done. Did they tell you like how many you had or like, how does that work? Yeah. They gave me measurements and all kinds of things. And so that's how I found out that my uterus was a normal uterus weighs 50 grams and mine weighed 1,050 grams, which is two hundred two and a half pounds. That's insane. Yeah. It's so, insane um, and so they had to cut it up in pieces. So there were, it was crazy. I guess it was obviously a big uterus because there were so many people that came in the room that day. Like there were students and like, <laughs> There were two surgeons and I'm like, oh, and they're like, look at this uterus. We yeah. haven't seen a big one in a long time. Yeah. Like, no Get science. in here. I mean, that's gotta, <laughs> that's gotta be really freaking rare to have a two pound. I, I don't think it is. I uterus. think it's something that, you know, that happens more often than not, but people just don't advocate for themselves. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, that's fair. I knew a girl, Whitney from Wells Fargo, that had the problem that you're ha- that you had. Whitney from Wells Fargo. Whitney from Wells Whitney Fargo. from Wells Fargo. Yes, and she had this issue. Okay, Whitney, if she you're was, listening, she was Mel freaking just... out because like she would go months, months with that with bleeding, and I'm like, yeah. you better get this fucking check, girl. Like this is not okay. Yeah, it's not normal. Like don't do that. But I yourself. and I had never had an extended period of time of periods. Like it was always really heavy and then done. Yeah. Okay. But then this. I, it never stopped. Like it never stopped, which I thought was strange. So it is. Damn. Yeah. So, so I don't know if it was a hormone imbalance that happens after yeah. surgery that caused the additional fibroids Maybe. or a combination of clotting and COVID or I, I, I really don't know. Yeah. There was um, a lot going on. So it's hard to pinpoint. Cause exactly. like I was on a, I was on a road trip with my sister. We got stuck in Florida after a Disney cruise and had to drive home oh. with two kids in the car similar just like long drive and I was on like my yeah. super heavy day in my period and like I had you know she was like I can't believe like we have to keep stopping and going to the bathroom mm-hmm. and I'm like we have to keep stopping like mm-hmm. I know we want to drive through but she's like and this isn't because when we started talking about it, she's like this has been going on for a while and I was mm-hmm. like yeah you're actually right I just that was something you put in the back of your head like mm-hmm. you know you're not taking care of yourself so you know I do my normal yearly screens and just move on about my day. But then I realized that it was a bigger issue. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You got to take care of your health ladies. Yes, yeah. exactly. Cause we've talked to people like dietitians and surgeons and they say, if you're regular, that's actually a sign that you're a very healthy person. Mm-hmm. So when yeah. it becomes irregular, you need to get it checked. And mm-hmm. I was never told that in, like when we were teenagers, mm-hmm. we had no idea what that meant. Like Kelly doesn't have periods. We didn't know why. 
She was just yeah. like, oh, yeah, I'm just one of those that don't have periods. Now we know, like, there's, like, a PCOS situation that happens to people. Mm-hmm. Your um, autoimmune diseases affect that. Like, yep. we just, there was not yep. enough information. Yeah, I mean, no. I, I never, mm-hmm. I, I think I was, it's probably been, like, at least seven years since I've had a period. See? Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I roll with it because I don't, I mean, fucking periods are stupid. I mean, they're necessary, but I hate them. They're stupid if you yeah. don't want kids or you're yeah. not actively trying to have kids. They're fucking stupid yeah. and pointless. I get it because I'm like her where like I've woken up and just be like floods everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. And it's so it's like a, fucking embarrassing. It is. It's so embarrassing, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And like one it's- time my bathroom door was broken we're not gonna go to that story Mm -hmm. but the bathroom door was broken and i was like i needed her boyfriend to come over and fix the door and he's like what's the urgency i'm like i'm on my period right now and i literally bled all over my bed and he's like oh shit and i was like yeah i'm like i'm no joke yeah no fucking so i need privacy to clean up damn (laughs) yes yeah and he did fix it (laughs) he did and it was good yeah i'd scare any any man any man into doing anything and just be like, I'm on my fucking period. And they're like, yes, ma'am, yeah. I'm on it. Um, let's talk about non-scale victories. Yes. A real what, one. Okay. I totally what has that. your, what has your like number one biggest non-scale victory been? So I am not a person who exercises. Okay. Like I, it's not my thing. I was a choir girl. I was in drama club. It with that wasn't anything that I even remotely wanted to do okay and i jogged for a mile straight without stopping the other day Ooh, look that's at that. huge and so i think that that was i think that's one of the biggest things um for me is being physically able to do more things mm-hmm. um and not realizing that i actually do maybe like exercise mm-hmm. i'm not gonna say that out loud too loud <laughs> but <laughs> I, I feel you, girl. I fucking hate some exercise. Kelly does not, um, not but I've fan. gone to, um, I started with a, like a semi-private training um, class and um, in May, and I've gone to 100 classes. I had my 100th class uh, last week. That's crazy. That. Good job. And wow. so train, um, trainer Tanner sent me a text because they send you text messages every once in a while. And he was like, just so you know, when you started, you couldn't do single leg exercises. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, I guess I couldn't. Like I, oh, I can get up off the floor without using my hands now. Yeah, mm, that's a big that. one. Like those things are huge. Um, I I don't know if I'm um making a career change yet, but I'm back in school getting my MBA, oh. which I never thought I would do. That's amazing. Um, it's an MBA, uh, Masters of Public Health, like a dual program. Okay. Um, because um, I'm. I think serving a, a larger group of seniors might be helpful because it's going to be the biggest population in our country yep. and they all do need help. So that's something um, I think I'm taking myself more seriously as a human being. Um, Good. I'm like able that. to say no more, although my team would probably tell you the opposite, <laughs> <laughs> but I really am able to say no more. I think being more present in my niece and nephew's life has been very important to me. I was at the mm-hmm. park the other day with my now five-year-old nephew I think he was four at the time and he was like Auntie M which they call me Auntie M which I think is really cute like Wizard, Auntie M Wizard of Oz. get on the swing you can get on the swing with me you can swing now and I was like no I can't what are you talking about I don't I was like oh yeah I can yeah you yeah can, girl get on the swing with you mm-hmm. just hanging out on the swing at the park yep I was like okay I don't care that it's you know 32 degrees and the wind's crazy and <laughs> you got your superheroes in this frozen puddle and you know, I love it. I love that. That's it. amazing. I had the bike and the superheroes and I'm like, we're going to burn some energy somehow. <laughs> so, well, how is um, the, you know, sexy time now? Cause I always like, that's wonderful. Sexy. Right. Yeah, that's, it gets so much yeah. better. <laughs> way better. Way yeah, better. For sure. I love that. I think She's that like, my, my husband, <laughs> I think my husband and I were a work in progress when we met. Okay. Um, we definitely had some things to work on. Mm-hmm. Um, we, you know, got our financial life in order. We're able to purchase a home, um, just in general, those kinds of things. And then just, um, him being able to support me has been wonderful. Mm -hmm. Um, the other day, I don't know. Oh, we used the cashback apps. He sent me like, it was like, here's $40 for Starbucks. Ah! 
I, t- I, you know, here's this for you. I mean, just, you know, I mean, he's, I love that. he's just very thoughtful. Yeah. Mm. So that's what you need when you're in this journey. You do. You need a thoughtful support system mm-hmm. because yeah. sometimes you don't I mean, need food. Don't give me food, but you can actually like send me cash app stuff. Like yeah. that's fun. Yeah. yeah it's fun. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah, I know you, you like, you know, your protein shake with your double espresso. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, that's, you know, that's your little treat for yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, I can definitely see at this point that there are old habits that easily could sneak back in. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, in that time frame. Yep. I am where, um, my bariatric surgeon, their team was like, we see some regain here mm-hmm. and it's like only eight pounds since May, mm-hmm. but we're concerned. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so, um, cause my BMI, cause I, I'm, I'm, I think I'm like between 240 and 250. It really just depends. Mm-hmm. So I'm still in that 38 to 39 to 40%, which would be obese, right. um, yeah. which I hate BMI in general. Mm-hmm. But um, I think that, so they mentioned GLP-1. It's not covered by my insurance. Okay. I saw that you guys use sequins. I went through that as mm-hmm. well. Um, okay. But I I am not there yet. Um, I'd have to get different insurance or something mm-hmm. to do that. So yeah. I'm not there yet, but We'll see what happens. And then you go back to the pillars. Like, am I doing all these things? Am Mm -hmm. I truly doing all these things? Why do I feel like absolute doo-doo? When my Mm -hmm. parents FaceTime me on a Sunday and are like, hey, we saw you and we're just a little worried. And I'm like, what? (laughs) What? What do you mean? Yeah. Why why are you worried about me? And then I was like, did I take my vitamins this week? (laughs) Oh no. Yeah, that's a big falling out of rhythm. Yeah. Yeah. Get yourself. And I was like, oh. Oh man, I haven't like, I mean, I'll take my antidepressant. Like I won't forget that. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. But like, but the antidepressants right in there, but I didn't set up my, I didn't set up my stuff. Mm-hmm. Right. And I was like, Oh, and I did meal prep and mm-hmm. where's my water bottle. I mean, and I just kind of went off the rail yep. for just only a week, but yeah. it's such a huge difference. Mm-hmm. You can feel it. It's wild. You can, you can. feel. you can totally feel it. Yeah. yeah. I'm also taking this accounting class. It's kind of stealing a little bit of my soul. It um, does. I'm an accounting mm-hmm. major, so I get it. Yeah, mm-hmm. it does. And it's 1,500 pages of material in like seven weeks. Ooh, Ugh. I don't. For bis- and so anyway, but the final is I'm taking the final. Um, I'm studying for it today, and I'm either going to take it tonight or tomorrow morning. Oh, so, good. Um, I'll be done with that. Yeah. And I guess I'm okay. I'm okay with the C. I've never said I'm okay with the C, but I'm okay. With oh, C. C's get degrees, girl. <laughs> I love it. That's my jam. So, um, other and I'm not a, taking my blood pressure medicine anymore. I don't have to take that. Nice. That's sleep apnea one. is still. So I record my, I, I do record my sleep and I do check my sleep. I want to get that inspire device mm. versus using my CPAP, but right. they have like a BMI requirement too. Oh, oh. I didn't know that. It, yeah. Um, which a coworker of mine, her husband sells those or is part of those. And oh. so I was like, can you tell me exactly why? You know, the, but um, I don't know. I'm probably going to get another sleep study done because I, I don't Good. think I need my CPAP. I don't like my CPAP. Mm-hmm. Not a huge fan. Mm-hmm. No, um, and I don't it. have that dull headache or feel not rested. Okay. I really don't. So, but then I, you know, downloaded a new app last night. I was like, let me see if I snore still. <laughs> And do you? Do you? I do. Yeah. Okay. Yep, I right. do. All right. Well, I mean, yeah, so. I think you're doing absolutely great. Yeah. I think you've been through a lot. Yeah. 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 And you're still here. I love it. You're still here. Oh, I forgot here. to tell you also five days after my hysterectomy, my husband had an emergency appendectomy. You guys oh, are ridiculous. No. You guys are meant for each other. Yes. 100%. Yes. So, Problem like, childs together. I was, oh, and Lord. I felt so much better after my surgery. And, and so I'm here and like, I'm like, are you sure, sh- are you sure you're in pain? Like, what kind of pain is it? And then I'm like texting an NP like, Hey, he, these are his symptoms. Oh Maybe God. it's because my aunt brought us pizza. We normally don't eat pizza. You know, I make cookies because that's what you do. You bake when you're, you know, so I don't know what <laughs> I think only you bake when that happened. I don't bake. I and like people came over to see me after I had surgery and I was like, I made chicken noodle soup and and here are these cookies that I tried and I can't really eat them, but here take these and she's like, We're supposed to be taking care of you. Yeah. 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 I so, think that's only you. I, <laughs> that's an Emily thing. So we had flu yeah. A. He had flu A and then they did a CT scan in the end. 
and an emergency appendectomy. And I oh knew that God. I was in pain and I'd forgotten my Tylenol because I wasn't doing the narcotics. I didn't do the narcotics at all. Good. Mm-hmm. And so um, <laughs> the charge nurse like walked me out to my car. Like, are you sure you're okay? I'm like, yeah, I'm fine. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so. Emily. One thing I oh, have learned goodness. from this whole episode is you need to take care of yourself and not just I do powering though. through. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Stop powering through. Mm-hmm. This yeah. one does it too. And then you then you guys like fall. Well, today's actually it I always took the whole catches day off. up to you. Guys. Today is a mental health day for me. Yay. Actually. I took the whole day off of work. My team knows not to bother me. Um, and I am taking a vacation at the end of March. Yay. Um, Where are you just going? because are you uh, I'm not doing it, not doing anything. I don't think my husband has spring break as well. Okay. So staycation. Uh, my I sister's like it. moving. So I might be helping with that, but like I might go to the Lake of the Ozarks for a little bit. Um, my parents oh, have yeah. a place there, so I could just go hang. It's Wait, got a nice how view of the lake. Is that from St. Louis? The Ozark? It's yeah. two and a half hours. Two and a half I hours. Go. We could do that. I could uh, do that. You really should. It's so pretty. Mm, yeah. So pretty. Okay. Well, if I can be the anywhere that uh, has Jason Bateman has been, I will be. Yeah. I love yeah, that. That's true. It's, that um, yeah, actually, that's where we had our wedding. Um, was at the oh, lake. Oh, fun! At the, oh, cool. at the not on the lake. It was at the Osage National Golf Course, but okay. It was um, yeah, we had our wedding there. I've been going there since I was a kid. So. Oh, awesome. very yeah. cool. Yeah. Well, Emily, I'm so happy you came on. Yes, very. This ex- was fun. Yes, yeah. we had a lot this of fun. fun. Um, we yeah. appreciate you sharing all aspects of your journey and being very candid and like open about all of the things because I really feel like a lot of women could relate to what you're going, yeah, what you went through. Yeah, we're all scared and embarrassed or shamed mm. that we even have a period, which is wild. Yeah, we talked about that the other day. We, we were like, what the fuck? Like, it's, yeah. it's nature, guys. Come yeah. On. So <laughs> thank you so much for being on the podcast, Emily. You're welcome. We really appreciate it. And to all of yeah. you out there, don't forget to go to YouTube and Hit the bell and subscribe so you can see our lovely faces and all the ridiculousness. And go to the website, sign up for the newsletter. Exactly. And we love you guys. And we will see you next Next Tuesday. Oh, you got (laughs) it.